previous lecture we looked at the design of an eccentric footing with strap beam manually by performing calculations in an excel sheet and in today's lecture we will see the design of the same eccentric footing and strap beam in csi safe software so i have already opened safe here this is the newest version of safe and its workflow is pretty similar to the analysis and design steps in ETAPS and SAP 2000. And if you are used to using the older version of SAFE and if you have downloaded this newer version, then you may find a little different in all the menus and all the uh, steps that you may have to perform for the analysis and design of our footings. So we will start with the software itself today. For that, I have already opened the software here. I will go to file and new model. Now the software starts with a model initialization form and there I will choose the use built-in settings with option. The display we need will be metric SI. The reason for default materials will be India. Steel section database and steel design code. We do not need this. Concrete design code I will select as the Indian code that is IS456-2000 and then click on OK. After you click on OK, this new model quick template form will appear. If you remember, this form did not appear in an older version of SAFE. But now this form appears and it is similar to ETAPS and SAFE. So here we will add a structural object and we will start with this grid only option. Story dimension we will not change, we will keep these default values as they are. I will select this option custom grid spacing and then left click on edit grid data. So let me select this display grid data as ordinates option and then I will draw and edit our grids in x and y direction here. Here we will be drawing the grids to model this footing here. So let me see here how many grids I may need in x direction. In y direction, I will only need one grid, that is this grid. And in x direction, I will need how many grid? Let's see here. This will be the first. The center of footing will be second. Third, this is will be fourth. The center of this footing will be fifth. The center of this column will be sixth. And this property line is will be our seven grids. So we will add seven grids in X direction and only Y grid in Y direction. So these ordinates, which will be calculated from the first grid, you have all the dimensions here. You can calculate these ordinates by yourself. And remember these L1, L2 and B values we have already calculated using manual calculations in our previous lecture. If you were starting to design this eccentric footing with strap beam very first in the mod in the software itself, then you may have to start with some trial values and then increase or decrease the size of this footing according to your need. But since we have already designed this footing in Excel sheet, we will just use the same dimensions that we have got from this manual calculation and then we will check how the design is given by the software. So if you already have L1, B and L2, then you can easily calculate these grid distances. So in Y direction, there will only be one grid. So I will delete other grids. In X direction, there are four grids. So I will add three more grids here. And our X coordinate will be zero. And then 0 0.935. 1.87 2.909 and finally 5.149 and then left click and ok and then left click and ok again the grids will be drawn on a window 
so these are your grids here now similar to what we do in etabs i will define the materials first so go to define and left click on material properties here are some default materials i will not use them so i will add new material the reason is india first i will add concrete and i will add m20 grade concrete so these are the properties of m20 grade concrete you can see here this material weight and mass mechanical property data these are analysis data that means the property of concrete required for analysis and then if this design property data if you left click on this modify so material property design data this is our design data this compressive strength is used in the design so i will not change any of these values here i will just left click on ok then i will add new material this time i will add rebar of grade yst 500 and left click on ok again this material weight and mass and modulus of elasticity coefficient of thermal expansion these are our analysis data if you left click on this you will see that this minimum yield strength minimum tensile strength these are our design properties that means these values are used during the design process so left click and okay left click and okay and left click and okay again and after that again go to define and go to section properties so we have to define two sections here one is the slab section and another is the beam section for strap beam so first let's go to slab section let's add new property here i will name this property is footing slab the slab material will be em20 grade concrete modeling type cell thin and this property data type first this will be our footing and the thickness will be if you go to my excel sheet you can see that after the design we derived the value of our footing slab is 480 mm you can see here the overall depth we got is 480 mm so i will use the same depth here 480 mm left click on ok so once we have defined footing slab you know we need to define our stiff property to model the column areas so select this footing slab option and then left click on add copy of property rename this as stiff others will be the same including the thickness and this type will be stiff stiff and then left click on ok and then left click on ok so after we have defined the slab property data now i will design or i will define for beam so go to define section properties and frame option left click and add new property we will add a concrete rectangular beam so left click on this rectangular section option i will rename my property as strap beam this material will be m20 grade concrete others will be the same this depth if you go to our excel sheet you can see that we have assumed and we have then designed our beam with this depth of 300 mm and sorry width of 300 mm and depth of 600 mm so change this depth to 600 and width is 300 so our section type will be beam section since it is a beam and we won't use any property modifiers for now and then left click on ok and then left click on ok so our beam and slab are also defined now now we will define for this swell subgrade modulus and if it were your previous version of safe then under this define menu you will find your swell subgrade modulus but here you have to go to define spring properties and then area springs you have to go to this area spring properties option to define swell subgrade modulus so add new property we will rename this property as swell support the subgrade modulus we discussed about how to calculate subgrade modulus if we do not have any swell test report from our bearing capacity value we have our bearing capacity is 100 kilonewton per meter square year so 
our soil subgrade modulus will be this 100 kilonewton per meter square into factor of safety which we take as 3 divided by permissible settlement permissible settlement for this footing we will take as 25 mm so you can write at the denominator 0.025 meter so this will be the value of our swell subgrade modulus do the same here 100 into 3 divided by 0.025 we get the subgrade modulus to be 12,000 kilonewton per meter per meter square we have this unit here because subgrade modulus the formula is given by pressure upon settlement so kilonewton per meter square is the unit of pressure and settlement is the unit unit settlement has the unit meter so this is the unit of our swell subgrade modulus and this non-linear option leave this default as compression only and then left click on ok left click on ok now go to define we will define load patterns here we have dead and live load here uh, if you were you were doing calculations uh, in an undergraduate courses then you may get the separate values of dead load and live load but since while designing this strap beam with eccentric footing we have axi total axial load coming onto our columns we will just define a load pattern named as total and we will just impose that load upon our columns and upon our footings here so let's define a name load name as total and this type we will select as super dead load that means superimposed dead load and then left click on ok ignore last edit click on no you have to add new load first left click on add new load now this load pattern is added here and then left click on ok and then go to define option again and load combination so we will add two load combinations here one is the service load combination to check for bearing pressure and another is the ultimate strength load combination to design for beams so add new load first we will add service load combination that means with load factor of one only so select the load com pattern is total and use scale factor one and then left click on ok again left click on add new combo rename this as 1.5 total this is the ultimate strength combination select the load pattern total and employ the scale factor 1.5 and then left click on ok left click on ok so now we have completed all the definition part we will go to modeling before modeling we will save the model save wherever you want to save it in your choice folder of your choice I will create a folder as safe design and I will name the file as simply strap design and then left click and save. So our model has been saved here. Now we will model our slab, our stiff columns, and then we will apply swell support to those slab. So let's go to our diagram here and we know that this L1 for this interior column that means this concentrically loaded column L1 value is 1.87 meter from our calculations in this excel sheet and the value of B for both of these footing is 2.25 meter and the value of L2 here is 2.25 Two four meter. So since I have model for these grids here, it will be easy for me to draw this column and footing. So go to this draw option and select this draw floor wall objects, and then select this draw quick draw area around point. So this here is the center of our interior footing, and this has the magnitude of 1.87 meter in x direction so 1870 mm and in y direction the breadth is 2.25 meter so 2250 this property will be footing slab and then left click on this point here let's look here our slab is drawn 
and the slab on this side is the x dimension is 2.24 meters so 2240 mm and the y dimension is the same the center of our slab lies here so left click on this point now our footing slab for eccentric column is drawn now we have to draw the stiff property for columns so again select the same option quick draw area around point select the property as stiff and the dimension of our column is 300 mm so x dimension will be 300 and y dimension will be 300 one of our footings is located here and another of our eccentric footing is located here so we will not drop beam for now because we want to check the bearing pressure when there is no strap beam so let's select this select object mode and then apply for swell support or swell pressure here for that i will select these two slabs here i will go to assign cell and then area springs and then select this swell support and then left click on ok now this swell support has been added here now i want to apply the loads to apply the loads you go to assign and then joint loads and then force but before assigning the force since we are going to apply these loads at the center of these columns or these stiff properties I first want to draw joint object here so first go to assign and clear display of assigns and then go to draw and draw joint object since if you select this stiff column now this joint won't be selected instead this whole cell element is being selected so go to draw and draw joint object I will draw joint object here at first and then second joint object I want to draw at the center of this column here it's okay now I want to go to option and graphics mode and standard graphics here and then your joint objects are viewed here I will save the model now I want to apply the loads here you can see that the load on this column is 468.7706 kN and the load on B column is 336.108 kN so select this joint first assign joint loads and then force this will act in the negative z direction the load pattern name i will select as total and the load in the global z will be minus 468.7706 and then left click on ok again select this joint here again go to assign joint loads and force the load pattern name will be total and the force will be in the negative z direction so minus 336.1082 and then left click and ok so if you now right click on these joint objects and go to loads here you can see the force in fz direction now since i will not be looking at the design of slabs now i will not draw any design strips I will just do check the bearing pressure of these two eccentric footing one is eccentric and another is concentrically loaded I will not draw any beam for now I, I want to check the swell bearing pressure so for that first I will go to analyze and then run analysis and design option it is being analyzed uh, check warnings in option I'll talk about this warning afterwards I will just click on ok for now so now you see here I will just close this you can see here displacements under dead load I want to check the swell bearing pressure here so I will go to display and slow let's go to display and let's go to show deformed shape not deformed shape since i want to check the swell bearing pressure
go to display show force stress diagrams and then left click on swell pressure here select the combination is service load combination that is 1.0 total left click on this show field and show values option and then left click on ok so you can see here that on this interior column our bearing pressure is around the value of 110 kN per meter square whereas in this our eccentric footing our maximum value has reached up to 195 kN per meter square somewhere below this footing here so there is a large variation in swell pressure you can see here the S at which the column is located we have the maximum bearing pressure under this column here about 180-190 kN per meter square and it is the least in this next is this furthest is about 50 kN per meter square so the safe bearing capacity of our soil was 100 kN per meter square but that safe bearing capacity value is being exceeded for both of these footings so to make this our footing safe under bearing pressure condition we have to draw the strap beam here so what I will do is I will unlock the model first and then I will go to draw and then draw beam column brace object draw beam column brace I will select this property as strap beam and I will draw the our strap beam from center of this interior column to the center of this base column so this is our beam here now if you go to this set view option and then extrude frames and extrude cells you can see our beam here so i will remove this extrude frame and extrude cell option and finally before proceeding what i want to do is first i want to mesh these slabs here so that our error that appeared in our first analysis do not appear here so select these slabs go to assign cell and then floor auto mesh options so I will mesh my object into 5 into 5 elements for now and then left click on OK here. So our slab footing slab have been meshed here and then I want to draw design strips since we want to see the design values reinforcement design values for these two footings I will draw our design strips here for that I will go to draw and draw design strips so strip layer I will select is a for strips in this x direction and then draw a strip from here to here and then i will select the strip layer b here and i will draw a strip in another perpendicular direction from here to here so now i will replicate this strip so select this strip in x direction and go to edit and replicate option i will replicate it in positive y direction at a spacing of 0 0.5 meter and I will select 15 strips for now so 15 strips is not needed let me select here 5 strips okay these are our strips in x direction similarly select this strip in y direction now we will replicate it in the x direction same at a distance of 0 0.5 meter and the number I will select is 12 so I have drawn 12 strips here and left click on OK. Now save the model. Now let's rerun our model after we have drawn the design strips and our strap beam here. So go to analyze and run analysis and design option. So it will take some time for the software to produce our analysis results here. Okay, this is our analysis result. Our analysis is complete here. So let's check for bearing pressure again. So go to display, so force uh, stress diagrams and swell pressure. We will see the swell pressure under service load combination. Click on OK. Now you can see here our maximum swell pressure is almost 100. You can see here 100.585, and this comes around. In this purple region here so this is almost safe 
if you want to decrease this safe bearing pressure below 100 you can increase this area by a little bit so we won't go into that because we just want to learn the steps about how to design this eccentric footing yet you saw that if we are not drawn the strap beam then under this ace column here our bearing pressure had almost reached up to 190 kilonewton per meter square however after drawing the strap beam now it is only around 98 and 96 kilonewton per meter square so this is how you check for bearing pressure after drawing design strap beam here and if you also remember for this interior column for this concentrically loaded column and footing our bearing pressure area bearing pressure or our swell pressure was almost constant for this whole section but after drawing this strap beam now it has also decreased in these two sections here so this is the use or this is the uses of this strap beam here so after checking for swell pressure and after ascertaining that our swell pressure is below the safe bearing capacity level go to display again and select this so on deformed shape go to display now i want to see the beam column forces that means the forces coming onto these beams so left click on this beam column brace forces here combination now i will select this factor load combination so 1.5 total and then left click on ok you can see that this is our moment 3 3 diagram so if you right click on this beam you can actually see the values here you can see that the maximum value of our shear is 691.27 kilonewton and the maximum value of our moment is near the middle at minus 270 kilonewton meter you can see why we designed for tension reinforcement in the upper region because here we have negative moment coming onto this beam so that our tension reinforcement lies at the upper region of this beam and then we also designed for this shear here you can go to display and then show concrete beam design option display type longitudinal rebar rebar type total and then left click on this impose minimum reinforcing display option field diagram and also show values at controlling stations and then left click on ok you can see that our maximum area of reinforcement we get is 1689 kilonewton sorry 1689 millimeter squared if you go to our excel sheet you can see that for strap beam our area we only got is 1183 millimeter square so a little bit greater reinforcement is being displayed a little bit not a little bit but a greater reinforcement is being displayed by this software so there will be some variations when you do manual calculation because since we are using the property of safe bearing capacity here but we are converting that to swell subgrade modulus in our safe software so there will be variation in result from manual calculation and while using software you have to ascertain which may be the proper design method using the available data that you may have and then choose the proper design results so we won't worry much now for the difference in the results so this is how you see the design reinforcement for our beams here you can go to this detailing and start beam detailing check option then you will be displayed with a detailing diagram for beam okay let me just close this here go to design concrete slab or beam design and then start design check So you can see your slab design results here or you can go to this display and after you have seen the design results for a strap beam go to show slab design show slab design we have talked about this in our previous lecture related to design of slab system in safe software also just left click on this impose minimum reinforcing for now we want to see our reinforcement in layer a so what we will do is we will use the typical uniform reinforcing we are saying that 
we want to use 16 mm dia bars for both top and bottom it is spacing of 150 mm in strip a here or layer a. and if these 16 mm dia bars it is spacing of 150 mm is not sufficient then we want to display the reinforcing display type is show number of bars of size top 16 and bottom 16 that means if you select these two options here this the diagrams in our software will only display the area of reinforcement when the 16 mm dia bars at a spacing of 150 mm is not sufficient for example if i click left click and apply for now you can see that our 16 mm dia bars at a spacing of 150 mm is not sufficient in these reasons and you may have to use extra bars here so let me reduce the spacing to 125 mm for both top and bottom bars and then apply it. Still it is not sufficient. So if you use it a spacing of 100 mm, now still some extra rebars are necessary here. That means in this case you may also have to increase the size of our footings here since if we are getting heavy rebar. Similarly for layer B do the same use 16 mm dia bars at 100 mm spacing you can see that for layer b this is sufficient so if we increase the spacing to 125 let's ignore the values outside this slab here even if we use it as a spacing of 125 mm then for layer b that means in y direction our bars 16 mm dia bar at this spacing will be sufficient so if we again increase this to 150 mm still it is sufficient so you can see that you are getting greater reinforcement for layer a that means in x direction and lesser reinforcement for layer b that means in y direction so let's click and close for now so this is how you check for and design for eccentric footing with strap bb safe software this is just a small tutorial you can design this eccentric footing by exporting your model from the ETAPS also and that exporting is done similar to what we learned for map foundation or what we learned for the design of our slab system in SAFE. Do go through those videos which are also available in our YouTube channel. So after this design, your analysis and design part for this eccentric footing with strap beam is completed. Let's see what happens if we go to detailing and show or edit beam detailing. So there are still many things to define here. So uh, let's not go to the detailing part for now. We just looked at the design of an eccentric footing with strap beam in CSI safe software. If there are any confusion, please you may ask through your comments under our video that will be posted later on our channel in YouTube or you may also message to us in our inquisitive engineer facebook page so after this third video of this series on design of combined footing in which we looked at the manual design of eccentric footing with strap beam and then we looked at the design of the same in csi soft safe software we have come to the conclusion of this video lecture series and in our next video lecture series which we will start hopefully very soon we will look at the design of our steel structure in ETAPS. so i want to say bye for today we'll meet again soon stay safe thank you